Good morning. Good morning. Can anyone tell me how many days there are in a week? That's right, there are seven days. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and yesterday was Wednesday. So what day of the week is today? Yes, today is Thursday. Today is Thursday, today is Thursday, all day long, all day long. Yesterday was Wednesday, tomorrow will be Friday, all day long, all day long. And yesterday we talked about how it was the first day of a new month. So if yesterday was the first day, what number day is today? Today is the second day. So we're gonna put number two right there. Now let's talk about the new month that it is. Last month was March. So this month is April. This month is April. So now we're gonna say the entire date, starting with the day of the week. Today is Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. Let's do it one more time. Today is Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. Great job, guys. Now that we're done with calendar, it's time to do the weather. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? Is it sunny? Is it rainy? Can we go outside and play? I want you to look out the window. Hmm, what does it look like outside today? It looks sunny. Has anyone gone outside? What did it feel like? It felt a little bit cool. So today is sunny, looks sunny, and feels cool. Now we're ready to read our weather board. The season is spring. Today's weather is sunny and cool. Great job. Now, to, during today's lesson, we're gonna do science and we're gonna read. Read a story with our interactive read aloud cards. In science this week, we were talking about plants. Now we're gonna start talking about living and non-living things. So I'm gonna share my screen with you now. All right, now you should be able to see my screen. I want you to look at the picture. There's so many things on it. Let's talk about some of the things that you see. You might see a cow. You might see some clouds. You might see a tree and some birds in the tree. You might see lots of animals like a dog, a chipmunk, and some sheep. You might see hills and grass and a barn. You might see some beautiful flowers. This page says, living it up. Living things are people, animals, and plants. They need food, water, air, and space to live. They grow and change. Living things reproduce. They make new living things like themselves. Now let's talk about the things in the picture that are living. Remember living things are people, animals, and plants. <clears throat> the cow is living. The dog is living. The sheep are living and the chipmunk is living. 
The grass is living. The flowers are living. The tree is living. And the birds are living. Now look at the things in this picture. Hmm. This page says, what's non-living? Non-living things do not need food or air or water. They do not grow and change. What are some non-living things? A rock is a non-living thing. Air and water are non-living things too. Now I want you to take a deeper look at the picture and tell me what are some non-living things that you see? Hmm. What are some non-living things that you see? A tractor is not living. It does not grow. It does not need to be fed or given water. A rake is non-living. A rake does not make more rakes. You're right. A shovel is non-living. Gloves are non-living. And boxes are non-living. They do not need to be fed. They do not need to be given water. They don't need air and they don't need sunlight and they don't need space to grow. Great job. Now look at this picture. In this picture, you see some things that are living and some things that are non-living. All together, all the living and non-living things in a place make up an environment. A farm is one environment. It has living and non-living things. What are some of the things that are living? What are some of the things that are non-living? Now on your paper, I want you to draw a picture of something that is living. When you're done drawing, I want you to sound out the word living. So now on your, pa pa on your paper, you should be drawing a picture of something that is living. Remember living things are people or animals. They need food and water. They need air and they need space to grow. When you're done drawing your picture, I want you to write the word living. You need to sound it out. Think about the sounds that you hear in the word living. What letters work together to make those sounds? I'm gonna show you my picture. I drew a tree. And underneath the tree, I wrote the word living. The word living starts with the L sound. L. Then you hear the I sound. L. Next, you hear the V sound. Live. Live. The word living ends with the ing sound. To make the ing ending sound, we use the letters I N G. Live. Ing. Great job. Now that is all we have for science today.
the next thing we're going to do is read one of our read aloud stories with our interactive read aloud cards. The Best of the West. What do you know about the American West? The American West is special. It's a special place to visit in our country. What country do we live in? Yes, the United States of America. That's our country. And the West is part of our country. We live in Florida. Florida is on the eastern side of the United States of America. The western side is the opposite side of the country. The American West is a special place to visit in our country. It has exciting cities, high mountains, and amazing wildlife. Let's take a, a tour of four famous spots in the West. Do you know the word for a crack deep in the ground with a river at the bottom? That's called a canyon. The Grand Canyon is a huge canyon in Arizona. Many people visit this national park each year. Visitors can enjoy the view or hike down the canyon. Some people raft on the Colorado River and look at wildlife. One animal is the California condor, the largest flying bird in North America. If you hike the canyon, be careful of the weather. It might be cold at the top, but the temperature at the bottom can be 100 degrees. Oh, that's so hot. <clears throat> Where in the West can you see bison, moose, and grizzly bears? And where can you see a natural fountain that sprays water more than 100 feet in the air? These are all found in Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone was the very first national park in the United States. It is an amazing place to explore. Under the ground of Yellowstone is hot liquid rock. Yellowstone is covered with spots where hot water, mud, and steam push up from underground. These areas are called hot springs. Pools of hot water bubble up from underground. Yellowstone also has hundreds of geysers, more than any other place on earth. Geysers are like hot springs that are rough with steam and water. The Old Faithful Geyser erupts about 20 times each day. It sprays water high into the air. Have you ever heard the word safari? On a safari, you travel through the land and look at animals. Yellowstone is a great place in the United States to go on safari. As we drive through the park, you will see bison, bears, moose, and elk up close. If you're lucky, you may even spot a wolf or bald eagle. Look at the picture, what do you see? You might see people, lots of trees, rock, and you see water and steam. Next, we're gonna look at a special building. Now we will travel north to the city of Seattle, Washington. From different spots in the city, you can see a strange white building poking into the sky like a giant needle. This is the Seattle Space Needle. The Space Needle is 605 feet tall, which is taller than most buildings. It looks like an object from outer space. You might wonder at the purpose of this building. It was built for the 1962 World's Fair, an important event that happened in Seattle. The fair's planners wanted to build something new and different. They wanted people to say, wow, when they saw the building. The Space Needle is made out of concrete. To make the underground base or its foundation, 467 cement trucks poured concrete for an entire day. Now let's head to the top of the needle. A quick ride in the elevators will get you there in less than a minute. 
At the top, you can see the entire city of Seattle. You can also see natural sites such as Lake Washington and Mount Rainier. Finally, you can eat at the moving restaurant and move slowly in a circle to show people the whole view of the city. Point to the, look at all the buildings. Point to the picture that you think is the Seattle Space Needle. This one in the center, the super, super tall one that kind of looks like a spaceship at the top is the Seattle Space Needle. It is super, super tall. The final stop on our tour is a famous bridge in the state of California. Can you guess what it is? Here's a hint, it is bright orange. It's called the Golden Gate Bridge. When it first opened, it was the longest bridge in the world, almost one mile. The Golden Gate Bridge is the boat entrance to San Francisco Bay from the Pacific Ocean. For cars, walkers, and bicyclists, the bridge is a way to connect the city of San Francisco with other places in California. Many people cross the bridge to get to and from work each day. The first thing you might notice about the Golden Gate Bridge is its color. The color is called international orange. The orange color was chosen to fit in with the bay's natural beauty. Some people wanted to use different colors. For instance, the U.S. Navy wanted the bridge to be black and yellow so that it would stand out. What do you think of the orange color? Do you like it? Or do you think it should be a different color? Hmm. If you think it should be different, what color do you think it should be? Since it was built, the Golden Gate Bridge has been closed only three times. People built the bridge to last a very long time. This incredible bridge turned 75 years old in 2012. So that means now it is 83 years old. That's super, super old. It really was built to last. So this week in English Language Arts, we learned about different monuments in our capital city, Washington, D.C., and we discussed different landmarks in other parts of the country. This is all setting us up to learn about monuments next week in social studies. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Bye.